The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Ladies and gentlemen, hello. My name is Arkady Medanchik and I'll be your host today. Welcome to the new episode of The Learning Curve, educational webinar series brought to you by eLearning Curve. First, a quick word about the series organizer and sponsor. eLearning Curve is the world's leader in online information management education. Its curriculum consists of over 25 full-length courses produced using a unique state-of-the-art eLearning methodology and technology and new courses are added each month. The courses cover various areas of information management from fundamentals to advanced topics in data quality, MDM, data governance, data modeling, and business intelligence. eLearning Curve also offers a robust certification program, Certified Information Management Professional, or CIMP, in various tracks. eLearning Curve's faculty is made of the world's most renowned experts and instructors, including such names as Sid Adelman, Mike Brackett, David Hurtson, Andy Haler, Steve Huberman, Kathy Hunter, Teresa Kushner, John Ladley, Arkady Medanchik, William McKnight, Dorothy Miller, Mark Pico, Rick Sherman, Maria Villar, and Dave Wells. And now back to the webinar. Our guest today is Dan Power. Dan is the founder and president of Hub Solution Designs, a management and technology consultant firm specializing in master data management and data governance. He regularly advises clients on developing and implementing high-impact MDM strategies. Prior to founding Hub Solution Designs, Dan was the general manager for Dun & Bradstreet Strategic Alliance with Oracle Corporation. He has 20 years of experience in management consulting, enterprise applications, strategic alliances, marketing, corporate strategy, and project management, and companies like Deloitte & Touche, Computer Science Corporation, eCredit, and Parson Consulting. Dan is a frequent speaker at technology conferences, writes a monthly column for Information Management Magazine, and is the guy behind the very interesting Hub Designs blog and Best Practices in MDM newsletter. Now, I know that Dan has a lot of very interesting material, so without further ado, I would like to welcome Dan Power. Dan, if you're ready, I'm going to switch presentation to you. Yep. And, uh, it should ask you to say yes a couple of times, and it's going to be all yours. Very good. Thank you, everybody, and I'm really glad to be here today, and I appreciate your being here and uh, appreciate your time today. I wanted to launch right in by saying that <clears throat> MDM is change and change can sometimes be difficult. This is one of my favorite quotes from Margaret Mead about uh, change management. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed people can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. But as M. Scott, M. Scott Peck, who's one of my favorite authors, says the road, in his book, The Road Less Traveled, life is difficult. But for many companies, it's not a matter of if they'll implement MDM, it's a matter of when. But how and why you do it is critical. And in my position at DNB prior to starting my current company, I kind of took on a role of MDM evangelist. And I, I deliberately set out to kind of bring that to DNB and bring that to our clients about uh, 2004. And I think you can do that yourselves. You can bring that change to your company. You can self-appoint yourself as a change agent and MDM evangelist and, and start today. You can bring that to your firm, uh, take that on yourself, and, and bring master data management as an as a instrument of change to your company. Um, it, will be, it will be hard, but it will be very valuable both to your own career and to your company. Um, but learn about it first and do it slowly. You don't have to do it overnight, but it, you know, how you do it and why you do it is critical. First of all, a little bit for those of you who may be new to the topic on what is master data management. I had to come up with a definition for this a few years ago when I wrote my first article for DM Review, now known as Information Management uh, Magazine. Um, Gartner would not give me permission to use their definition, so I had to come up with my own. It's a set of disciplines, processes, and technologies. It's not any one thing. It's a set of things for ensuring the accuracy, completeness, timeliness, and consistency, which is the definition of data quality, so MDM includes data quality, of multiple domains of enterprise data um, across applications, systems, and databases. So the word across is critical here. Across multiple business processes, functional areas, organizations, geographies, and channels. So it spans the enterprise. But also, in order to, to be successful with MDM, you should start with data governance. And we don't have time today in the, in the time frame that we have available to get into a, a big discussion of what data governance is. That would actually be a separate webinar. But start about six months before you plan to get into MDM uh, with an effort around data governance. And we will 
talk about data governance, but it, it's really um, more kind of a, an MDM presentation than that, than a data governance presentation. So very quickly, we're going to talk about the five essential elements of MDM as I define it. The hub itself, and you'd be amazed there are people that try to do MDM without a hub. They'll try to do it in a data warehouse or an operational data store or an ERP system, uh, but without a central or, or without a federated data hub. There are three major types of hub. A registry hub where you store only the identity information and foreign keys. The other end of the spectrum is a persistent or transactional hub where you store all the critical information from each source system into the centralized hub. And obviously there's a, there's a, a point in between those two where you have a coexistence or hybrid hub which uses a mixture of the two styles where you store not only the, the keys and some of the information but you have obviously pointers to the, the source systems where you are going to not store that into the centralized hub, but for performance reasons or political reasons, you are going to have that back in the source systems, but not in the hub. And obviously now, due to the consolidation we've had in the marketplace over the last year or so, uh, you may have vendors that have several different hubs from uh, recent acquisitions, and that may include people like Oracle, IBM, and even Informatica. So the hub market has gotten uh, very interesting in the last couple of years. Data integration is, is a second essential element. Uh, you've got to be able to synchronize data into and out of the hub. Uh, it may not be real-time. Near real-time is becoming more common. Uh, but definitely go beyond just batch integration. Uh, batch is important, obviously. Uh, you want to be able to do batch integration into and out of the hub. But near real-time or real-time is becoming uh, very common. You need to be able to build a single source of truth, um, and having out-of-date information in your hub kind of defeats the whole purpose of your MDM program. Uh, I had one client early on that was planning to do a hub, and they were only doing one-way integration into the hub. They were not planning to do um, integration back out again, and they had five mainframe-based source systems. And I asked them about that, and they said, well, it's very expensive to build this integration back into the mainframe. And I said, yeah, but isn't it kind of expensive to build a hub and, and not synchronize the data changes back to your source systems? And doesn't that kind of defeat the whole purpose of the program? So give it some very careful thought, but you're definitely going to need some data integration or middleware. Data quality is another essential element. Um, you, you know, a lot of times people start by thinking our data is pretty good, you know, 80% better, 80% 80, 80 data quality or better. Um, but then when they start to look at it, you know, oftentimes the levels of data quality go down um, through some profiling or some analysis that they do. Uh, so a robust data quality tool is vital uh, in standardizing and correcting the levels of, levels of data quality. It can really make the difference between a failed project and a successful project. But I, I still very often will see people trying to do MDM projects without a robust data quality tool. Uh, they'll either use one built into the MDM hub that isn't very good, or they'll try to, to skimp and they'll, they'll get by without any data quality tool. They'll just build it themselves, or uh, they'll, they'll write programs in SQL or whatever. Um, but go with a, a good um, third-party data quality program if you need to, um, and then make sure the profiling is up to snuff, and then use it. And, you know, profile your data. It's like that saying about voting in Chicago, vote early and vote often. Uh, well, profile your data early and profile often, and then include regular uh, repeating of the profiling in your data governance program so you can monitor your data uh, quality levels over time, particularly if you do a lot of acquisitions. Uh, because the worst thing you can do is accept data from a newly acquired company and just dump it into your, um, and I see this all the time. People go out and acquire a company, they get 100,000 or so new, new customer records, and they just dump them into their, their production systems with no, without even assessing what, the, what that would do uh, to their data quality program um, and data quality levels ahead of time. External content. Um, after having worked for DNB and now partnering with DNB and with other firms like Equifax, this is a constant uh, reminder of the value of information you don't already have. And people say, well, we have terabytes.